Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Sebastian and in a few weeks WWDC 2015 will take place and in this video we'll take a first look at what we can expect from iOS 9 and macOS 10.11. So as 9to5Mac reports based on anonymous Apple employees there will be a big change in terms of iOS and macOS updates this year. So while in the last couple of years there have been quite big updates to iOS and macOS that have also changed the appearance of both OSs, this year will be completely focused on fixing all the bugs that have really piled up over the last couple of years and just make the overall experience more seamless. Now we've seen last year's new features like for example third-party keyboards on iOS 8 and also just a complete redesign on macOS Yosemite. But this also came with a lot of bugs, for example, with third-party keyboards not showing on iOS or also a lot of Wi-Fi issues on macOS. So this year it's all about fixing those issues and making it as reliable as Snow Leopard, which is probably my favorite macOS operating system of all time because it was basically flawless, at least in my experience. So allegedly software engineers at Apple even asked the management team to not introduce any new features to iOS and macOS in order to have the time to fix all the issues that there are already currently. But of course it's tough to really demonstrate or show this off at a conference like WWDC. So there will be a couple of new features. Now starting with iOS 9, it's likely that we are going to see a new system-wide font which is called San Francisco and we've already seen this on the Apple Watch and it's very likely that it will also make its way over to macOS as well. On top of that, it seems like we'll get a new standard app on iOS and that will be Home. And Home will be the app that's used with HomeKit. So this will be the place where all of your HomeKit enabled devices will live in one app and this should basically allow you to have commands programmed inside the app for example um, my time and then the thermostat from one company will turn on or off and also the lights will dim for example so this is the app where all of those HomeKit enabled devices will live in and where you'll be able to control them without needing five or ten different apps that you currently need on top of that, it also seems like there will be an update to the Apple Maps app that will now also include public transportation, which has been lacking for a long time. And in addition to that, for iPad users, great news. It seems like we'll get split screen multitasking, similar to what we've already seen on Android tablets like the Tab Pro series from Samsung. In terms of macOS, it seems even more difficult to constantly deliver new features every year, especially then also for free. So it seems like we'll only get very few new features in macOS 10.11. Now one of the new features of macOS 10.11 could be control center, so it could make its way over from iOS to macOS. And this would be a place to the left of your screen, so it would slide in from the left side and give you control over the currently playing music, airdrop, sleep mode, um, snoozing notifications and things like that. So that would get a lot of things just out of the upper taskbar in macOS. But this has actually already been in betas before for Yosemite and then it was removed so it's not quite sure if it will really be part of the OS 10 11 update. But as I mentioned the big story here with macOS and iOS this year will be unspectacular changes behind the scenes and also security improvements. So one of those improvements will be called rootless and this is supposed to prevent certain files from being accessed from the user even if it has admin rights. So for example, malware couldn't attack this part of the system because nobody has access to it. Now while it seems like this will be optional on macOS, this will likely be required and not be able to be turned off on iOS and this is also supposed to be a big blow to the jailbreak community. So while iCloud Drive is around for some time now, it seems like Apple will update quite a few of its apps, for example, Calendar, Reminders, EndNotes, to a new backend with iCloud Drive, and that they will sync over this system instead of IMAP, and this is supposed to be quite a bit faster, and also just bring users to really use iCloud Drive more than they currently do. This year there are also good news for the owners of older Apple devices, such as the first generation iPad mini, or also the iPhone 4S, even with the Apple A5 chip, 
iOS 9 is supposed to run really well. And the way this works is that while previously Apple would release just the full version, for example, of iOS 8 for those devices and then basically strip down the features that don't work properly, it seems like Apple will just develop from the ground up a new version for these older devices that have less features. So it should run way better and should be great for everybody who has an older device to at least get some of the features and especially get security updates as well. And this is basically all we know so far about iOS 9 and macOS 10.11. Again, don't expect too many new big features. Just expect the features that are there already to work way better. And I think this is a great strategy because while macOS and iOS have been known the past couple of years to be very stable and reliable, at least in my experience on my iPhone 6 as well as on my Mac Pro, uh, there have been more and more bugs and I just hope that Apple is able to just solve them with these updates this year. Of course it's a shame to not really have any fancy new features but what do these fancy new features help if they don't work properly? So I'm really eager to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Do you agree? Do you rather want to see way more features or do you think it's time for Apple to take a step back, fix everything that's broken and then maybe bring new features next year? My name is Sebastian, thank you very much for watching, subscribe if you like this video and for many more videos in the future. Like the video if you enjoyed it, see you next time.